the magnetic bliss of purpose. So in relation to our conversation on Sunday, in which we spoke about the feeling of bliss and how from that feeling of bliss, everything happens automatically. Overthinking, doubts, indecision do not seem to exist while we're in that flow. And in relation to that conversation, we spoke of how others show up saying the same things that we imagine. We experience synchronicity in conversation. So now I'd like to relate purpose and bliss. I believe that when a person is on purpose, they feel blissful. I also believe that someone on purpose inspires others to also discover what is purposeful in their lives and also, as a result, experience the bliss. And so reflect with me for a moment. Think about a time in your life where you met someone, where in their presence you felt bliss. In those moments, you suspended any ideas of lack and you encourage possibility-based thinking. Maybe your imagination came alive and you saw in your imagination visions of how you truly want to live. Something within us recognized something within them. As in, in their presence, we were encouraging some attribute within ourselves. And perhaps that attribute is related to what we're going to talk about in this video, purpose. And so we see then when we interact with others that live a purposeful life, perhaps even when we think of them, it further encourages and awakens within us our own purpose. This is happening within ourselves. So let's talk about this. James Allen, I've got some notes here from As a Man Thinketh. Conceive of a legitimate purpose in your heart and set out to accomplish it. It may take the form of a spiritual ideal, or it may be a worldly object. Make this purpose your supreme duty and devote yourself to its attainment. And so if a person creates a purpose, they say, this is how I want to live. And they actually, in that moment, commit to it. What they will notice then is their communications with others will change. From that feeling of bliss inside, they awaken the bliss in others. Because something within us that is authentic and that we truly desire is acknowledged in that person. And in that moment, we go into that magnetic bliss of purpose. It's important to recognize that this is sourced from within. What we're experiencing is what William Walker Atkinson talks about here. He says, Each individual mind is a center of mentative energy, and that the mentative energy of an individual mind may be, and is, transmitted from one person to another by means of mentative waves or currents that these mentative currents or waves tend to induce in the other minds of the persons the emotions or feelings existing in the mental states of the person sending out the waves of currents. So we get into the state first, and from that mental state, they automatically attracted those in a mutually collaborative, harmonious way as they also inspired through their own being the bliss in others, which had externalized from their bliss within. Now let's go deeper into this. As we've been discussing with William Walker Atkinson's work, we inside are the suggester and the suggestee. We can suggest anything to ourselves and accept the suggestion. Now a person might have been going through their lives and accepting suggestions about themselves that might not be true to how they authentically want to live. However, there's a point in a person's life where they receive an intuition or insight, perhaps a flash of inspiration upon their mind's eye, or a calling via inner voice, and set out to accomplish it. They feel that childlike curiosity again, and it mirrors as others showing up reflecting that 
as also it is inherent in others. And so through our own representation of this within ourselves, it mirrors itself as harmonious, ideal relationships, encouraging and awakening that bliss in another person. Through our own being, others experience it also. So he says, each individual mind is a center of mentative energy and that the mentative energy of an individual mind may be and is transmitted from one person to another by means of mentative waves or currents in which then we see others show up saying the same thing synchronistically and all of this is spawned from the mental state. And so to facilitate the state within ourselves of magnetic bliss in relationship with others, we want to observe if we're identifying with the following beliefs. I am not good enough. I am unworthy of. I'm unimportant. And recognize that if a person has identified with a state of I'm not good enough, I am unworthy of, I'm unimportant, then perhaps they might see those reflections in their relationships with others. Perhaps they'll see people telling them, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you're not important. And as they're hearing those statements, they're resuggesting it to themselves. They're saying, they're right, maybe it is that way, it really is that way. Rather than when a person recognizes, as we spoke of in Sunday's video, that they're complete inside, everything exists within them. They have everything now inside, and the outer world shall be an expression or reflection of that fulfillment inside. And as a person recognizes their completion within, if they hear statements like, you're not good enough, you're not worthy, you're unimportant, what they'll notice internally is perhaps an inner conversation that says, well, that's not true to my authentic self-image. And in reality, I am. I am enough. I am worthy. I am important. And others show up in mutual harmony and fair exchange. And so, again, this goes back to the premise of our conversation. Something within us is recognized within others, and that's an energy that's felt, which we might not have conscious understanding of how it works. However, we can feel it when we're interacting with someone who embodies it. Something within us is actually recognizing something within them. And that something within us is our own symbolic representation of the bliss. When a person commits to something that they conjure up as their purpose, you decide what that is. Whatever it may be, as James Allen said, it could be a spiritual ideal, a worldly object, whatever it is. Release any kind of shame, condemnation, and commit to what you truly love and desire. The moment you commit to it, you feel the bliss. And all the stuff we're talking about here happens automatically. And if, so, if a person has these kinds of beliefs here, let's take one of them and run through an example. They can have an internal dialogue within themselves. For example, I am not good enough. We can say, according to whose standards, knowing that I am the suggester and suggestee within. Or they could say, is this really true? Where were times in my life where I used to think this way? However, now through reference experience, I realize it's not the case. Or they could say, has there been anyone who thought that they were not good enough in the beginning that eventually revealed the inherent self-confidence and embodied it to such a degree where upon interaction with them, they had said to me that there was a time where I thought I wasn't good enough. And because that person embodied their vision to such a degree, it was hard to believe that they once saw themselves as not worthy. Or they could suggest to themselves, I am worthy, I am enough. And they can feel the authenticity and reality of that statement, knowing that the reality is that we're complete inside. Again, watch the video that I did on Sunday. By thinking that way, or feeling that way, or thinking feelingly that way, or imagining what implies, and they actually experience it. Now let's bring this back to the beginning here. So James Allen, conceive of a legitimate purpose in your heart and set out to accomplish it. Make this purpose the centralizing point of your thoughts. See, the purpose becomes automatically 
the centralizing point of our thoughts, as we've been discussing, the ideal inner conversation plays out automatically from the premise of the vision realized now by asking the question, what do I love? What do I desire? How do I really want to live? What is the ideal way I want to be? What is my ideal lifestyle look like? And by asking these questions, we start to imagine what implies and we accept the suggestion. And when we accept the suggestion, we enter into that state. And what we'll notice is that when we're in that state, these thoughts here, I'm not good enough, I am unworthy of, I am unimportant, don't seem to exist. And so now in regards to the magnetic state in relation with others, let's tie this in. He says, each individual mind is a center of mentative energy and that the mentative energy of an individual mind may be and is transmitted from one person to another by means of mentative waves or currents. These mentative currents or waves tend to induce in the minds of other persons the emotions or feelings existing in the mental states of the person sending out the waves or currents. And so then as we remain in the state, which is true and authentic, inspired by a vision or a purpose, we notice then automatically, you'll observe it, the relationships and conversations that you have with others change. And by change, more accurately put, that they're harmonious with the vision. And you'll even notice that they say these things. They'll say, I feel a certain way around you. As they describe their emotions or what they're thinking, you'll see that it is representative of the state that you are imagining. And as you continue to remain in this state, this becomes automatic as I've seen it with myself. What was more so a bouncing back and forth of I'm good enough, not good enough, worthy, not worthy, is now a consistent flow of this magnetic bliss state. And so the way I describe this feeling is losing myself in bliss. And when I perform all my initiatives from that perspective, I feel myself expressing that energy. It feels like it emits and flows out of me, in which others seem to show up around me having those same emotions, those same feelings, as they also reveal and identify with their purpose, whatever it may be for them. And then we understand what it means here to a deeper degree. The artist knows what it is to lose himself and his work, and his greatest successes come at such times. Every writer knows this also, and the phenomena occurs in all manner and kinds of work, including relating with others. And one of the ways to spawn it is by conceiving of a legitimate purpose in your heart, accepting it as the reality now, as you allow your ideal inner conversations to play out, maintain that state, and realize your vision, attracting others in harmony during the process. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I recognize bliss is my true nature. From this premise, others show up automatically in mutual inspiration. Symbolic of these experiences are visions inspired from my heart upon commitment to the vision now as reality. Ideal thoughts from the dream, the seedling of reality, express blissfully as others showing up in mutual harmony and in contribution. As I recognize my completion inside, in harmony with my vision, I recognize in relation, the vision is complete. From the acceptance of the vision, the purpose in my heart, all people in harmony show up automatically and effortlessly. I recognize then the feeling is mutual, expressed from the ideal state of mind of purposeful bliss. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.